this will be part four of what if Deku could create quirks. Now, there are some changes that I'm going to make on this. Nothing huge, just pretend that Momo was taken with the rest of the group and Todoroki is a girl. That's basically just imagine that from the last part. If you haven't seen the last part, this probably won't make any sense. It, it might make a tiny bit, but you should probably watch the other part first. But if you have, uh, well, continue watching. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I left off right after the USJ incident, right after Deku took a group of people, which is Kirishima, now Fem Todoroki, Momo, Jiro, um, Tokoyami, I believe. If not, he's at it now. And, uh, and, uh, what's his name? Eraserhead, um, I was trying to think of the hero name, but, uh, Aizawa, in other words, he took them, and, uh, yeah, so those are the people at that base, um, for quirk training for Momo, she's just creating stuff with a quirk for Tokiyami, which I'm pretty sure I didn't add last time, but I'm adding this time because I want to. He's going to have his quirk be trained in darkness for quirk training. You know, a room with, uh, you know, darkness and light. You know, where I can switch quickly. So if he gets out of control. But yeah. That's their training. Todoroki's wouldn't change. And yeah. So. Alright. So. It's now... I believe I time skipped like a month later, but I ain't sure. But yeah, so it's at whatever time it was before, and the UA Sports Festival is coming up in about a week. So yeah. So. In one week time, that's when the UA Sports Festival is going to happen. I'll cover that when I get to it. Though it's not really going to be as important as it is in canon. Anyways. So. Deku and his team have been training up a bunch. And. You know. They've just been training Deku and Shinzo. And Aizawa a little bit. Not as much, because he only came some days. They would be doing vigilante work. I gotta think of a name for Aizawa, which I probably will sooner or later. But, uh... It's probably just gonna be, like, Eraser. Or something. I don't know. I'm not gonna try and think of vigilante names for all of them at once. Uh, I'm not gonna get it at all. But, uh, Yeah. So, they've all been training. Deku declares that most of them are ready for, of course, vigilante work. And he decides that since there's more of us now, there will be pairs. So, basically, weakest would go strongest, second weakest would go second strongest, you know. And, uh, let me see, let me count Tokoyami, Jiro... Todoroki, Momo, Deku, Eraser Head, and uh, Shinso. That's seven people, I believe. Um, let's see. Did I count Kirishima? I think I counted Kirishima. Um, either way, if there's an extra person, they'll just go with the uh, Deku. Yeah. And uh, Deku and Shinso, they'll just be watching their partners and basically, sh like, looking out for them. So that's how that vigilante work is going to go. So, yeah. 
Anyways. Other than that, yeah. So, that's just going to be visual anti-work stuff. So, alright, time skip one week. Each of them have done, you know, visual anti-work at least twice, you know. Because, like, you know, they can't go out every day. Because they're not used to it and it's a strain on their body. Even though that the uh, healing thing does wonders, it's not perfect. Anyways. So. <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm already tired. It's not even eight. So. Neku and uh, everyone else basically are just going out, you know, doing vigilante work. Deku and Shinto, Shinso are just doing their normal routines, you know, just with some people coming along for their vigilante work. And yeah. So everyone got a huge power buff to what they would be in canon. Uh, Kirishima can already go unbreakable for a short period of time. Uh, Momo can create two things at once if they're simple enough. Jiro, I don't know. She got faster at using her earphone jacks. Uh, it's stronger attacks with their sound waves and she can hear more. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to do for her, to be honest. Um, Todoroki got past the fact that the fire thing, so she'll already use her fire, and her ice will be much colder. Well, not much colder, but I mean, like, it will still be colder, and she'll still be able to make more of it. Azawa can use his cork for a bit longer, like a whole minute longer, which is pretty good. Well, it's actually really good, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's everyone. Let's see. Jiro, you... you, you, you. I believe that is everyone. I stated... Yeah. So that's... That's everything that's going on. Yeah, so that's their power buffs. You know, they've of course all of them have gotten stronger physically speaking at least. Uh so yeah. That's just power buffs. Alright, time skip to the sports festival. Now, I'm going to cover it even though there's really no point. Actually, I don't need to. Let's just say Bakugo won. Uh, Ida got second. And... Uh, thank you, got third. And... Uh, that's just that because there's nothing really involving them in it because I'm not going to stray from the entire storyline right now I mean I might do that in future ones but I'm not doing it in this one so yeah so Deku and his entire group they're going they're just training. And now it is three weeks later. Um, and Deku catches wind through uh, sources by uh, Shinso torturing someone. Or information by that, I mean, he brainwashed them. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, so he uh, caught wind of it, and uh, yeah, Shinsu, you know, he told Deku, hey, there's apparently supposed to be a summer camp that's going to be raided at UA, and uh, Deku finds this interesting. He's like, hmm, this will be good. We can take out both enemies at once, you know. Since they're vigilantes and they think the hero society is, well, shit. And uh, the villains are pretty much shit, too. So they're kind of trying to take out both. So, you know, if they can take out both while they're fighting each other, uh, why not? Right? Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm just saying. I know I forgot to say this. But any quirks I gave to, like, everyone, they also got buffed. I don't know why I thought of that, but it's going to bother me unless I say it. So I say it. Mm. Yeah. 11-11. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. So. Let's time skip to the... Uh, summer camp to the summer camp um if you're wondering everyone except for Monoma and uh Mina and uh Denki passed and Uraraka passed the uh what's it called the mock tests I think I'm, I'm not sure the name just the final test to see if you can go to summer camp or not. You know, that doesn't affect anything because they're still going to be there. They're just going to be taking your manual courses. I just felt like telling you that. I don't know why, but I did. So, yeah, deal with it. Um. So, thank you. And his group have just been powering up more and more, you know. Uh, yeah, that's basically what's been going on for them. They've all been powering up, you know, getting stronger. And, yeah. So, let's get right into it, you know. So, Degu decides, you know, after persistent begging from people to bring them along for the raid that him and Shinso were planning, because uh, people wanted to come, i.e. all of them, you know. Degu didn't really want them to go because uh, he wasn't sure. You know, if they'd be ready for, like, special, like, operations, you know, like that. But, uh, you know, they all convinced him eventually. So he's like, all right, I'll bring you guys, you know. But, uh, he, uh, He's just, like, thinking, I'm going to have to be extra prepared to make sure they don't get themselves hurt or killed, you know? Because, like, that's kind of a lot of work. But, uh, Deku says, all right, so, by the way, this is one day before they go. Um, you know, the night before. Deku's like, all right, so we have information that there's going to be a guy with a poisonous quirk who wants to take him. Deku looks around, and he sees Aizawa saying, I will. And uh, Deku's like, all right, then. Next, we have Muscular. I don't want him. His quirk allows him to increase his strength to many times over. Shinso says he'll take him. Um... Who wants to take, I don't remember all of the names of them, but uh, Mr. Compress is one of the ones I remember. Who wants to take Mr. Compress? He can make things really small, including us. And uh, 
Let's say Jiro says she'll take him. Uh, Spinner, who wants him? Uh, let's say Jiro. I mean, not Jiro. Ejiro is what I was thinking, but Kirishima says he'll take him. Uh, that was Spinner. Dobby, who will take him. Uh, Deku looks around. No one raises their hand, so Deku take, decides, all right, I'll do it. Um, twice. Who wants him? I think I didn't say Momo yet. Momo says she'll take him. And uh, who wants Toga? And, uh, you know, the only one left, I think probably maybe is and no, I didn't say Tokoyami yet uh moon sh moonfish and uh, that's Tokoyami says he'll take him and uh after uh, that it's just I believe Toga which is Todoroki Todoroki will take Toga on and uh yeah that's that all right, so the plan is set. Everyone, make sure that you're prepared to take out your target. Let me know if you need any weapons or, you know, anything equipment-wise. Otherwise, just go to bed. No training today since we have a special mission tomorrow. And everyone's, you know, strategizing and stuff. And, uh, you know, then they just all go to sleep. There's no training uh, the following day. You know, they just hang out in the morning, you know, do some boring chores. And, uh, you know, after a little while, after, you know, when it's uh, about to start getting dark, you know, like half an hour before, everyone is starting to put on their gear, you know, since they got to be ready. You know, making sure they check everything. All right, this ain't going to break in the middle of a fight. You know, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, that's just what they're doing. And uh, so time skipped out after everyone has their gear on. Everyone has their special ops on. Um, everyone has their own thing. I'm not going to look up pictures for each of them. Imagine it if you want, but it has dark theme because it's vigilante gear and vigilantes aren't supposed to be flashy in my opinion it can be but i mean like you aren't sneaking around in the shadows anymore which is kind of what i picture vigilantes as but hey you know picture whatever you want i ain't here to tell you what to picture but yeah they generally have darker pick darker colors you know you know dark red dark blue purple dark green black that's mostly what they're wearing. Like, there's some other colors, but, I mean, that's just the majority of what they're wearing is colored that. I should stop rambling about the clothes, the color of their clothes. But, yeah. So, yeah. So, they're all ready, and uh, Deku told them already to meet him in the, tr in the, um, let's say in the living room and you know they're all there with all their stuff and Deku walks in everyone's already there and he's like is everyone ready to go and they're all like yeah we're just give a nod you know either one and the, yeah so now now they go to well they start their operation all right now i'm not really sure what teacher to put like to say you know they're there to replace aizawa so we're gonna say there isn't one because I can't think of one, and, um, I really 
like, the only ones I can think of just wouldn't make sense. So, it's just Vlad King, and, uh, you know, 1A has been transferred, you know, it's basically all 1B now. Everyone's in 1B. Even though, like, people from 1A still call themselves 1A. Why? Because a lot of them were overcompetent bastards. Or just spoiled. Yeah. Basically, that. Ooh, I got an idea for what if. Maybe I'll do that. Hmm. I'll talk about it at the end. Anyways. So, what was I? All right. So, Deku and the rest of the group, they teleport there. And once they get there, they instantly start dashing. Well, they don't instantly, but I mean, like, they appear, like, in the corner of the forest. Because Deku says this is the rendezvous point. If you're hurt, just use your telepathy to contact me or someone else nearby to help, and we'll immediately come to you, you know? Because he takes precautions. Because uh, I believe I did give them all telepathy. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think I did. And if I didn't screw it, they have it now, you know? So, Neku says, all right, guys, move out. So he inst, but, um, wait, before he does that, he makes a map and, uh, it, with a quirk, he makes like a little, like, map out of clay and earth. He makes it so it shows everything that goes on in high detail. And, like, where everyone is. So, he marks out everyone's targets, you know. So, he's like, alright, everyone see your target? Alright, head towards them. And beat them. Rendezvous. Right here. And he points to a building in the middle-ish of the forest, which is where the training camp is held in canon, but it's just the rendezvous point because it's just something you can see easier than other things. And Deku says, I'll give you all a signal via telepathy when to reconvene, or another type of signal, you know, you'll just know it. All right. He says that, and then he basically flickers out of there, you know, like body flicker. Basically, just because he moves so fast using superhuman. He doesn't feel like using teleportation, because, yes, it does have some backlash if he uses it constantly. And uh, he feels like he should get some exercise, you know. Plus, he's, he's pretty much a goat. Like, it would be really, really difficult to just touch him. Like, at all, though. Like, <laughs> anyways. So. Alright. So, let's start off with uh, Aizawa's fight. So, Aizawa... He's running through the forest in a direction, and uh, he's running with Shinso, but Shinso splits off from him because they just happen to have targets in the same general direction. But actually, no, not Shinso. I'm, uh, let's say, uh, Jiro. Yeah. And, uh, they're just heading in the same 10 year old direction. It's not going to come into plot later. It's just. They just are. And uh, then Aizawa splits off. And Jiro goes off another way. So Aizawa stops right before he sees gas. And uh, he's like, I'm glad I asked for this gas mask. You know, because. 
They planned ahead. They got information on people's quirks. I saw one knew he would need a gas mask. So he brought one. Well, he got one from Deku. And Deku was like, you know, he asked Deku for one. And Deku was like, all right, bet. So, he, you know, grabbed one from the storage room. So, Aizawa, you know, he just started, you know, running in after he put on his gas mask and made it secure. He started running in, and uh, he was looking for the center of it because he noticed it was moving in a certain way. Then he heard a gunshot and saw a bullet go right by him. Not on him, but, you know, he didn't get hit, but, you know. So Aizawa decided to start running faster because uh, now he knew the general target, you know, like pretty close to his location. You know, he knows basically where he is. So he starts running to it in, you know, a weird pattern so he won't get shot. And he makes it there without getting shot, luckily. And uh, he, tr he, st he can see the boy now. But he doesn't see any exposed skin, so I'm going to make this a drawback of his quirk. That he can't use it without seeing the person itself, and the clothes don't count. So he decides that uh, he's going to have to use a scarf. Otherwise, he's got no chance. You know, because unless the guy's like sleeve comes up or some shit, but you know. So Aizawa starts running around the guy, you know, trying to make sure that he doesn't get shot. And, you know, he's running around and running around a little bit. And every once in a while, he throws in a hit from his scarf. But it never really connects. It gets close. But then the guy just moves out of the way. Then Aizawa realizes he's going to have to try something else. So he goes for a throw of the scarf like right to the left to the right of the guy the guy dodges to the left and you know he just thought it was just he missed but then Aizawa started switching the direction of his run and got in real close real fast and wrapped up the guy and then he uh pulled up like the guy's sleeve real quick and just canceled his quirk and he doesn't need to make constant you know looking at them he just needs to you know he just needs to look at them to start the effect so you know the quirks erased and uh Aizawa uh how dark should I make this should I make this dark because I could just have him kill the guy uh let me pause this and think it over real quick I have come to a decision, so that I deposit, think it over, but uh, screw it. I'm making it dark. So Aizawa then takes the pistol from the boy, after pulling up the gas mask, and shoots him in the face. Two times, you know. One for confirmation. And, uh, in the middle of it, as I did get grazed by a bull, but it wasn't that bad. Alright, now let's go over to Tokyo Yami versus Moonfish. So, Tokyo Yami is kind of losing control, but he has some control over it, but it's getting difficult for him to handle. But, uh, Compress is getting kind of fucked. Like, you want to tell me you can fight against Tokoyami when he's, like, at night when he's using his quirk without some sort of light source? No, sir, you cannot. Well, like, that thing was rampaging in the anime, so he, he's mostly getting trampled. He's just trampled. Basically, in the end. That's basically how that fight goes. Uh, but, Togoyami, it does take like a minute or two. But he does manage to turn Dark Shadow off. And, you know, control it. 
So yeah. All right, now over to Kirishima's fight, which was with Spinner, I believe. And, uh, all right, let's go to that. So Spinner says, you're just a kid. You shouldn't be, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, fighting with adults, you know. And Kirishima's like, that's not manly of you to say. Because uh, he still has that personality. It's strange. Just saying. But yeah. So. Um, you know. They're not much of talkers. So. Hiroshima's like. That's enough talk. Let's just fight. And Spinner's just like. All right. So Spinner takes, like, his giant-ass bundle of swords. Like, who would think of that as a weapon? That's just, like, a bat made out of blades. Like, that thing's just ginormous. And Kirishima's, like, in his mind, he's like, Oh, you're about to lose, bro. And uh, Kirishima, he runs in, and he activates, you know, his hardening, and... He goes straight into unbreak, Unbreakable, you know. Red Riot Unbreakable. Because he's strong. He's strong, boy. And he getting kind of OP, not gonna lie. <sighs> so. So Deku, he is going to, you know. Well, actually, I'm sorry, Kirishima, he goes straight in, and uh, he smashes, you know, he uses a, the, like, side of his hand, and he, like, hits the sword away. It doesn't smash at all, but it cracks some of them. You know, they're not all one thing, they're just taped together, basically. And, uh, Spinner was surprised, and his sword was, like, basically behind him now, because that's how heavy it is how hard Kirishima hit it, it's kind of difficult for him to, you know, recover that quickly, you know? So Spinner, basically knowing he's about to get crushed, he drops the sword and takes one out of the scabbard on his back. Yes, he has a normal sword. And he goes for a quick slash to Kirishima, you know, right down the middle of him. But Kirishima dodges to the left, so he doesn't get hit. He narrowly avoids it. But yeah. So Spinner says, You got some quick reflexes on you, don't you? Kirishima's like, Thanks. So, Warwick. Alright. So Kirishima says, Thanks. And, you know, Kirishima decides, you know, he's in his mind. He's like, I can only hold Unbreakable for 45 more seconds. So, he goes straight in, and he uses his hand and forms a claw with it. And he puts his other hand above his head. So, you know, like, to the left a little bit, and above his head. So, he makes the claw with the right hand. And he starts to slash, and uh, he goes, and uh, he slashes Spinner in the stomach. Now, Spinner does try to smack, like, cut through, like, stop it, but it don't work, because Kirishima, you know, he's just stronger. So, yeah. Uh, yeah that and uh yeah i say yeah well a lot <laughs> anyways so now let's go over to you know what that's enough of the fights i really don't need to cover all of them let's just say you know uh shinso controlled uh 
muscular to make him, you know, quiet. Uh, Deku, he, crap, uh, Deku, who was he fighting? I can't seem to remember. Deku was fighting Toya Todoroki, if I'm correct. Yeah. So, Deku basically just activates his um, own fire quirk. Actually, no. Let's say that uh, Deku uh, uses uh, a darkness quirk. And uh, he uses the move Void. And it puts Deku and Toya Dobby. Why can't I remember his villain name, but I can remember his normal name. Jesus Christ. Whatever. Whatever. So, they find themselves in a black void where there is nothing except for them. And Deku says... We're now in my place, and you have no hope of getting out. Dobby sends a wave of blue fire at Deku, but Deku just disappears and reappears somewhere else. And Dobby's like, how'd you do that? Teleportation, maybe, is what he was thinking. Deku's like, I know what you're thinking, but it's not teleportation. And, uh... Ooh, I got an idea. Do I want to? Sure, sure. We're 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 doing it. We're we're doing it. You know. So, uh, Deku's like, I know who you really are, Toya Todoroki. And uh, Dobby's like, How'd you know that name? You know. And. Uh, Deku is like, because I can look inside your mind and read your memories, your thoughts, everything about you, even things you yourself don't remember, I can see. And uh, Deku's like, Deku appears behind Dobby, and Dobby sends a wave of blue fire at him. Deku's like, there's no need to try and hurt, try and fight me. You're not going to win. Dobby says, Well, even if I can't win, I still have to try, right? Deku says that's admirable of him. Try and win a fight. He knows he won't win. He also says... Todoroki. Why don't you come and join me? I could definitely help you. And your sister. And uh, Toya and uh, Shoka. Or Shoto as he is normally referred to, but Shoka in this, used to be really close. And, uh, Toya is like, what do you mean? How do you know Shoka? And Deku says, well, she is my responsibility. Toya is confused by what Deku means, but, you know... What you gonna do? So, he's like, what do you mean by help me in Shoka? I know what your situation is, Deku says. And I can get you out of it. All you have to do is... Come work for me. But hey, even if you don't wanna, you can still live in my compound. And 
Toya's like, how can I trust you? And Deku shares his memories, you know, with Toya. Specifically, when he found out, when Deku found out that Dobby was Toya. And he was like, thinking, you know, I've got to help Shoka. You know, this will probably help her a lot with her family issues if I can find her brother. When uh, he found out about that. And uh, when he found out Dobby was Dobby, he decided that he would recruit Dobby, or at least do his best to. And Dobby is like, still suspicious, but he goes along with it. Because he just gets the vibe that Deku is, you know, trustworthy. So, you know, he just decides to, you know, go with it. And Deku's like, he appears in front of Dobby and shakes his hand. Deku says, do you want me to remove those scars? Dobby says, only the ones for my quirk. Deku says, granted. So Deku uses a quirk, a healing Dobby. Making it so that Basically, the only scars left are from his bastard of a father. You know. Deku says, are you sure you don't want me to heal the others? And Dobby's like, yes. It's a reminder of who I gotta kill. And by the way, uh, everyone killed their own opponents except for Deku, basically. And, uh, yeah, this is the only other significant fight. None of them are really significant except for this one. Because uh, this actually has important stuff. But, yeah. Huh? Okay. So, basically, uh, Dobby says, so what now? And uh, Deku says... Here, follow me. So Deku runs at a... Well, De Deku teleports to the top of the building. And basically, he kills uh, Vlad King. And, like, injures a couple other students. With, like, just, like, a couple of spears he made with his quirk arsenal. You know, he's, like, through four or five. And uh, Deku shot up a flare because uh, he wanted to. You know... And, uh, you know, he's like, if this attracts attention from other people, I'm okay with that. So, yeah. So, Deku really just fights. Well, just, you know, he shoots up a beam. And everyone's like, yeah, that's definitely the signal. And they already defeated their opponents and they, uh, they all carried small knives, you know, because Deku said you're going to need them. And they all finish off their opponents, like, killing them if they don't already. Minus Deku, of course, because of Dobby, you know. I'm making this a bit brutal, but, uh, screw them. They fucked with the wrong people. Um. And... That's a good idea. And uh, Deku, he decides that uh, Deku, he wants to, uh, you know, gather them all. So he shoots up the beam. And in about 45 seconds to a minute and 15 seconds, they all arrive, you know. They all arrive in that time. And Dobby's like, wow, they're fast. Deku's like, yeah, and you will be too once you're trained. Shoka's the last to arrive, and when she uh, gets there, she sees Totoro. 
she sees Toya and she cries and is like, where were you, you know? And, you know, she's just happy that she sees Toya again because, you know, she missed her brother. And, you know, because they were close. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, Dobby says it's complicated. And, uh, Deku says, all right, this is a success mission, a successful mission. All right. And, uh, he goes, and, uh, yeah. He's, uh, he's done. <sighs> well, he said, we're done. So let's go back to base. And, uh, Deku goes and says, all right, guys, tonight you all did really well. And, uh, let's welcome Dobby to the family. Cause like, they're kind of like family, you know? You know, to the group. You know? Welcome, Dobby, to the group. You know? And, you know, they're all, like, talking to him. And, you know, asking him, like, So you're Todoroki's brother? Yeah. So should we just call you, like, Toya? Or, like, should we call you Todoroki, too? And, uh... Toya's like, just call me Toya, since two Todorokis would just confuse people. Oh, wait, no, wait. No, 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 Shoka, she already liked to be called her first name, because the last name was trash because of Endeavor Ho. I forgot that. But, yeah, that's... They both like to be called their first names, and, uh, you know. He's just like, call me Toya. You know, they all just assume same family issues as Todoroki or Shoka. So they're like, all right, we'll call you Toya. And uh, Deku's like, all right, we all earn a relaxing soak in the hot tubs slash hot spring. And, uh, you know, they all go and Deku says, yo, Dobby. Uh... Let me know if you need anything. And, uh, you know, while they're walking over the hot springs. And uh, Deku asks him what size of clothing he wears so he can get him stuff. And Dobby's like, I wear, I don't know. Just think of a number that makes sense. I got no clue. And uh, Deku's like, all right. And uh, he teleports and uh, he reappears in like, three or actually like 10 seconds and Toyo's like what the fuck and uh then Deku comes back with a pair of clothes and he says does this look like it'll fit and uh Toyo's like yeah that should be fine Deku says we'll pick up your stuff later and uh you know so, you know, they all go and they enjoy a relaxing soak for about 45 minutes. Then, uh, Deku decides to, you know, get out and start making food. Uh, Toya says, I'll help. And Deku's like, can you cook? And, uh, Toya's like, yeah. So, Deku's like, all right then. So, they go and, uh, you know, they go, they get food ready. And Deku's like, wow, you can cook really well. I did not expect that. And, uh, Toya says, well, yeah, I had to cook for my little siblings all the time. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tired. And, uh, that's kind of how I learned. Deku's like, that's really cool. And, uh, basically, Toya just, you know, you know, Toya and Deku 
they call everyone. By the way, Teku, uh, just you know, before they call everyone, Deku says, uh, Deku says, put out your hand. And uh, Deku, you know, he makes two quirks and gives them to him, to uh, uh, Dobby, and uh, he makes one that says resistance to heat one that's resistance to heat and one that's telepathy like the rest of the group and Neku says this should prevent your burns and allow you to communicate with us and uh he's like alright thanks so yeah and uh Toya is like thanks and Deku's like, all right, let's call everyone for uh, food. And Deku's like, all right, everyone, be here in five minutes. Food's going to be ready in five minutes. So, like, it's already ready, but, I mean, they need to set the table and shit. So, you know, everyone, they get out the hot springs, and uh, they go and they get food. They go to get food. Food. And, uh... Since uh, they get in food, you know, they're all going, they get in food. And, uh. Mm -hmm. You know, Deku's like, alright. Thanks, Toya, for making food. And uh, Deku did bring an extra chair. So, yeah. And now there's an even amount of people. I think there was seven before, but now there's eight. So, yeah. Three on each side, and Aizawa and Deku on the ends. And, uh, Shoka and to Toya have their own little reunion. And, yeah, that's that. Um, that's basically the summer thing. Um... Let's see. Oh, yeah, I should probably tell you about Toy. So, they all eat, and, uh, then they all go to bed. And, uh, Deku, you know, he goes to bed, too. Actually, yeah, he goes to bed. And, uh, oh, freak, I forgot. Um, Deku also gave Toy up sleepless like the rest of them, so they only need, f so he only needs four hours of sleep as well. And, uh, Toya's like, thanks, bro. Because, you know, I would love that. If I had to have one of those quirks, it would be sleepless, you know. Five seconds of sleep equals, you know, five hours. Bro, that would be freaking awesome for productivity. Anyway. So. Thank you. And Toya, you know. You know, Deku gave Toya the sleepless thing, too, then. So, everyone went to bed. So, first view is Deku. Then, surprisingly, Toya gets up a little bit before Shinso does. And Deku's like, you know, when uh, Toya, you know, he got a brand tour. So, he knows where everything is. And, uh, <laughs> he finds his way to the training room for the morning. And Deku's like, you know, he was expecting Shinso when he... Heard the door opening. And Deku's like, oh, you get up earlier than Shinso? And uh, he's like, I guess. Deku's like, all right then. Now might be a good time to get your stuff from your old place. Do you know where that is? You know, have an address or anything? And uh, he's like, blah, blah, at blah, blah street, you know. In whatever district. I'm not going to think of random street names. But yeah. It's like. You know. This place. On like. The second floor. You know. And uh. This apartment number. And Deku's like. Alright. He uh. Gives it a minute. And uh. You know. He looks up the place. Looks up the 3D model of it. You know, what it should look like. Probably, you know, blueprints. 
You know, because you don't want to teleport in stuff. Deku might be fine, but it pretty much screw you up. You know, like Deku could probably heal it or turn back time, but you know. Uh, but you know, he he still don't want to do it. He teleported in the wall once. It was really sucky. And uh, actually, Deku just uses um, Hurry Link, and uh, you know he sees Toya's memories of the place, and then they teleport there. And Deku's like, "All right, grab anything you need." By the way, before they left, Deku put on soundless and sightless on them. So you can't see or hear them or anything they do. So yeah. Deku's like, alright, let's go. Because like, if you're both affected by the quirk, you can hear and see each other. Let's just say. So... They went and they grabbed all of Toya's stuff. Deku's like, you need any help grabbing anything? Toya's like, yeah, could you put that in this duffel bag? And uh, Deku's like, sure. You got anything else you need? Anywhere else we need to go to grab stuff? Toya's like, nope, we good. And Deku's like, all right, then. That's that's good. And, uh... <sighs> Sorry. And Toya, he goes and, uh, you know, they grab everything for him. Deku's like, all right. He teleports back to the base in Toya's room and says, sorry, we didn't do this last night, but uh, we were, you know, getting back from a mission. And uh, I was kind of tired. So, so you know, we're just going to, you know, you can just decorate your room now. Do you want any help? Toya's like. No, actually, I'm fine. So, yeah. Deku then goes back to the training room to find Shinso waiting. And Shinso, you know, being proud because he thinks that he actually got up before uh, Deku did for once. Thanks. Oh. You know, <laughs> gotta rub it in a little bit. And he's like, hey there, sleepyhead. And Deku's like, you didn't get up earlier than me. I just went to grab Toya. I just went with Toya to help grab his stuff. And Shinso's like, dang it. You know, because he really wanted to be, you know, first up for once. And he's like, wait. If Toya got up after you, doesn't that mean, before I got here, doesn't that mean he woke up before me? Damn it, now I'm third? And Deku's like, yep. <laughs> And uh, Jinso's like, gosh, dang it. So, you know, they just do their morning training, like typical. Uh, everyone else joins in sooner or later. Toya watches, you know, because, uh, you know, everyone's got sparring partners, except for, like, uh, let's say, I gotta think of someone. Mm, let's say uh, Momo Everyone's got sparring partners Except for her So he's gonna be her sparring partner And uh You know He's gonna use his flames on Low temperature Because he ain't trying to kill her You know his corpse cremation, he can obliterate a body. He ain't trying to do that with Momo, so. But they're going to be training partners. And that's basically all the new characters I have for this. Plus the summer camp arc. You know. So, next one, or maybe... Actually, I'm not sure, but... The finale will be in, like... Anywhere from, like, one to three parts from now, probably. But I am not sure. No guarantees or promises. So, yeah. Now, this is the end of part four of What If Deku Could Create Quirks. I hope you enjoyed. Comment anything you want to see. Also... Let me know if you want to see what if Deku was reincarnated, 
reincarnated into Black Clover because I also like Black Clover and I'm probably going to do it regardless. This just regards, you know, how like how long it will be until I make it, you know, like if it's a priority or if I'm just going to do it after I finish off these three series that I've got going. Also, I might end off Forest Guardian at where it is because basically no one's watching it and I get that I don't have anyone watching all of my other videos, but I mean, I don't really think anyone's watching it, but I mean, like, if you are just comment it and I'll, I'll keep it going till it's the end of that series, and, uh, I just started Sherlock Holmes Deku, I'll probably continue parts of that after I finish What If Deku Could Create Quirks, What If Deku Was Quirkless, and What If Deku Was The Forest Guardian, that's basically going to be my schedule for, well, priority list of what I'm uploading. I'll try to post once every day, but, uh, you know, I ain't got no guarantees for any of that. So, you know, just be aware that I may not, you know, post every single day. I will try to post once every day. No guarantees, no promises, but with that being said, let's end that. Let's end this off here. Uh, let me know anything you want to see, any what ifs you want me to make. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Just if you want to see something, let me know because I'll be happy to do it. Well, probably depends on what it is. There's probably I already got a few other ideas that I've got going, but you know. I'll try and take any suggestions I get, which I'm probably not going to get any, but uh, if you watched this far, thank you for sitting through an hour of me talking, an hour and two minutes to be precise, um, and uh, thank you for watching this far, and uh, yeah, by the way, the art is not mine, you can see the watermark in the bottom corner, alright, bye.